Eighth grade open up resources, illustrative mathematics. Unit eight, lesson 13, cube roots. Problem number one, find the positive solution to each equation. If the solution is irrational, write the solution using square root or cube root notation. A, t cubed equals 216. The cube root of 216 is six because six cubed is 216. That means that the three dimensions of this cube, the height, the length, and the width, would all be six units. B, a squared equals 15. The square root of a squared is a, and the square root of 15 is irrational because it never repeats and never terminates. So when a squared equals 15, then a equals the square root of 15. C, m cubed equals eight. Two cubed is eight. Two times two times two is eight. So m equals two. D, c cubed equals 343. Seven cubed equals 343. 7 times 7 times 7 equals 343, so C equals 7. E, F cubed equals 181. Since the cube root of 181 is irrational, then we can say that F equals the cube root of 181. It's time to do something nice. Like this video, say something in the comments, Tell a friend about this channel and hit that thanks button. Problem number two. For each cube root, find the two whole numbers that it lies between. A, the cube root of 11. The cube root of 11 lies between the cube root of eight and the cube root of 27. That's because the cube root of eight is two and the cube root of 27 is three. B, the cube root of 80 lies between the cube root of 64 and the cube root of 125. That's because the cube root of 64 is 4 and the cube root of 125 is 5. That means that 4 times 4 times 4 is 64 and 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. That also means that some decimal between 4 and 5 times itself 3 times equals 80. C, the cube root of 120. That's going to be similar to the last one. That lies between the cube root of 64 and the cube root of 125. For the same reason as the last one, the cube root of 120 lies between four and five. And finally, D, the cube root of 250. That lies somewhere between the cube root of 216 and the cube root of 343. That's because the cube root of 216 is six. Six times six times six equals 216. And the cube root of 343 is seven. Seven times seven times seven is 343. So the cube root of 250 is a decimal that lies between six and seven. Problem number three, order the following values from least to greatest. First, let's find their values, then we can order them from least to greatest. The cube root of 530 is a little bit greater than eight. The value of the square root of 48 is a little bit less than seven. The value of pi is a little bit greater than three, and the square root of 121 is 11. The cube root of 27 is three, and 19 halves, or 19 divided by two, is 9.5. The smallest value is the cube root of 27. Its value is three. The next largest value is just a little bit greater than three, and that's pi. Its value is 3.14159, and it never ends. The next largest value is the square root of 48 that has a value that's just a little bit smaller than seven. The next largest value is the cube root of 530. It has a value that's just a little bit greater than eight. 
The next greatest value is 9 halves. Since 19 divided by 2 is 9.5, 19 halves has a value of 9.5. And finally, the largest value. That's the square root of 121, which has a value of 11. Because 11 times 11, or 11 squared, equals 121. Problem number 4. From 8th grade, Unit 8, Lesson 8. Find the value of each variable to the nearest tenth. One of the legs of this right triangle is labeled with a variable x. We have to find the side length of this leg, and we can do that by using the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We can substitute a squared with 2.5 squared. We can bring down the b squared because that's x, and we don't know its side length yet. And c squared equals 7.5 squared. 2.5 squared, or 2.5 times 2.5, equals 6.25. We can bring down the plus b squared. And 7.5 squared, or 7.5 times 7.5, equals 56.25. Since we're solving for b, we need to get that b squared by itself. So let's subtract 6.25 from both sides of the equal sign. That leaves us with b squared equals 50. That means that side length x has a length of the square root of 50. The instructions are asking us to find that value to the nearest tenth. The length of this side length to the nearest hundredth is approximately 7.07, .07, but to the nearest tenth, that would be approximately 7.1. B. We'll use the Pythagorean theorem for this one too. Let's substitute a squared with 7 squared. We can bring down the b squared because that's the missing leg, or we can just write f squared. And we can substitute c squared with the square root of 78 squared. 7 squared is 49. We can bring down the plus f squared. And the square root of 78 squared is 78. So now the equation reads 49 plus f squared equals 78. Since we're solving for f, we need to leave the f squared by itself. So let's subtract 49 from both sides of the equal sign. That leaves us with f squared equals 29. The square root of 29 is approximately 5.39. But to the nearest tenth, that would be approximately 5.4. C. Triangle C is made up of two right triangles. So if we find the missing side length of one of the right triangles, we can double that to find the missing side length of D. Let's use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Substitute A squared with 8 squared. Bring down B squared and then substitute c squared with 11 squared. 8 squared is 64, bring down the b squared, and 11 squared is 121. Now the equation reads 64 plus b squared equals 121. To solve for b, we need to subtract 64 from both sides of the equal sign. Now the equation reads b squared equals 57. That means that side length B of the right triangle is approximately 7.55. Now if we double that, we'll have the missing side length for D. 7.55 plus 7.55. That's approximately 15.1 units. Problem number 5. From 8th grade, Unit 8, Lesson 10. A standard city block in Manhattan is a rectangle measuring 80 meters by 270 meters. A resident wants to get from one corner of a block to the opposite corner of a block that contains a park. She wonders about the difference between cutting across the diagonal through the park compared to going around the park along the streets. How much shorter would her walk be going through the park? Round your answer to the nearest meter. This rectangle represents the standard city block in Manhattan, 80 meters by 270 meters. This diagonal line represents the shortcut she'd like to take across the park. This forms a right triangle. We can use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we can substitute 
270 squared plus 80 squared equals C squared. 72,900 plus 6,400. That equals C squared. So C squared equals 79,300. The square root of 79,300 is approximately 281.6 meters. So the length that she would have traveled would have been approximately 281.6 meters. That's a shorter distance than if she would have stayed on the street. If she stayed on the street, that would have been 350 meters. 350 meters minus 281.6 meters equals 68.4 meters. To the nearest meter, her walk was about 68 meters shorter than if she would have stayed on the streets. Be sure to support my YouTube channel by liking this video and hitting that thanks button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.